most important journey you will take in your life is the one of self-discovery and transformation. Welcome to Elevate and Liberate podcast. I'm Ashley Rose, and each week we'll dive deep into transforming our inner world in order to create the life and love you crave. Who are you really? And what's actually possible for you this lifetime? Subscribe now and let's elevate and liberate love, life, and self. The amount that we all change, like each and every single day, is I think most of us don't acknowledge. And with this change that we actually experience, we no longer have these like connection, like the same connection points to people that we used to basically hang out with. And that may be family, that may be friends, that may be a romantic relationship, that may be people at work. And I find that relationships is one of the most challenging things to, I guess, navigate, particularly when you're choosing to um, change and transform and kind of like be the best version of yourself. Because what actually occurs is you changing makes people really uncomfortable. And a lot of people in this reality, they want you to stay the same because that means that they can control you. And more so that means that they don't have to kind of like, um, it's easier for them basically if you stay the same. Because when you change, it kind of throws like everything completely out basically. So with this thing of like, existing in a relationship or not having someone receive you or not having someone see you or acknowledge you this is where you have to recognize like you can't change anything or anyone if you have someone in your life that does not see you that does not receive you that does not acknowledge you first and foremost you have to recognize that okay you can't actually change what they're choosing that's number one so I want to say this so everywhere any of you have taken it personally where somebody hasn't seen you, received you, or acknowledged you, will you destroy and uncreate all of that times a gazillion, please? Be really willing to acknowledge that you can't change that. But how many of you believe that it must be personal, that there must be something wrong with you, and you start going about trying to change yourself or fit yourself or mold yourself into their reality, into someone you're not in order for them to actually receive you. How many of you have done that? (laughs) For those of you that can't see anyone else, basically everyone raised their hand. So this is where we really get stuck. This is where the, I want to say problem, but I don't like using that word, word comes in because what happens is you've now gone from being everything you are, having your voice to absolutely excluding you, not just from their reality, but from the world, the universe. Every time you literally try and change you, anytime you try and fit into somebody else's reality in order to be received, you've literally excluded you in the process. And this is where the kind of, I want to say, challenge begins in all of these relationships, because all of a sudden you're like, where did I go? I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't even know what's true for me anymore. So like I said, number one is to have you all truly acknowledged, and I mean truly acknowledged, that it's not personal. And I just want you to sit with that for a moment. Because the thing is, if you are trying to change yourself to fit in with another, or to be received by someone else, you've already decided it is personal. So this is what I want you to kind of get first. It's never personal. The degree to which someone else can receive you, see you, or acknowledge you is the degree to which they themselves can receive, see, or acknowledge themselves. Have you truly acknowledged that you cannot change someone? Because remember, you trying to change anyone is you being like the healer or the unfulfilled savior of the universe. So this is where I kind of where I wanted to get to tonight was rather than looking at where someone's at. So where someone, friend, family member, lover, kids, team members, rather than looking at what you need to do to change that, 
what you need to change within yourself, what's wrong with you, where you quote unquote messed up. What if you instead started actually changing your focus and attention and you started asking like, what works for me? What actually truly works for me here? Because that's when you go from being the unfulfilled savior of the universe into actually being the source of creating your relationships. So the question then becomes, what actually works for me in relationship? Does this work for me? Yes or no? What works for all of you in relationship or doesn't work for you in relationship that you've never acknowledged before because you've decided that you need to get to more allowance? Or there's something that you need to do to change this. And this is something that is like quite a big conversation as well. But it, I started noticing where it come up in my last relationship and also with a guy that I started just previously seeing was I really started recognizing how I was functioning from this point of view of I need to get to more allowance. It must be me. If there's something coming up for me that's like, agitating me or I keep thinking about and for me with my with my ex and again for those of you that are completely new to this you won't know much about him for those of you that are not new to me you would have heard me speak a lot about him he's an incredible incredible being but the thing is that kept coming up for me was this like inability to receive or be present with me or kind of create a future there was a lot of maintenance involved in our relationship like maintaining what was not actually creating just something different and so I constantly had these kind of thoughts going on I constantly had this stuff coming up about like I'd like him to be more motivated or I'd like us to kind of create more or um, he doesn't really receive me or he's not really present with me and I started like I constantly would make myself wrong for that like okay now I need to work on this. Okay, I obviously need to be in more allowance. I need to change something here. I need to do more classes. I need to do more courses. And I started recognizing like recently where we go from using this thing of it's me to then actually exclude ourselves in the process where we use this like ever expanding choice for greater consciousness to our disadvantage, like where we kind of use it to destroy us. Let me expand on that a little bit. This thing about allowance, there's this, you know, we speak about this a lot using the tools of access consciousness where it's like, okay, you've got to get to allowance. You've got to get to this space of allowance where everything is just an interesting point of view, where you have no expectations, no judgments of the person, no projections, just you're okay with what is, you're in allowance of them. You're not trying to change them, right? But what I see occur, particularly when it comes to relationships, is you use that point of view to, I need to be in more allowance, to actually exclude your awareness of what actually does and doesn't work for you. Cool, got it, amazing. So I just want... I just wanted to bring that up. And again, you can apply this to any relationship, but if you are in a, like in a relationship right now, or like a struggling to, a struggling with like teammates, people that work for you, a struggling with a lover, friends, family, and you're really going down that path of what am I doing wrong here? What do I need to change here? Like, how can I change this? So it's different. Ask yourself, okay, is this actually me being the unfulfilled savior of the universe? Yes or no? Oh shit. Okay. Yes. All right. Rather than what actually works for me. So if you get a yes to you being the unfulfilled savior right now with whatever's going on and however you're kind of um, processing it, um, I want you to then ask, okay, is this me being the unfulfilled savior? If yes. Okay. What actually works for me here? And what most people don't recognize, and this is like kind of the number one, like the key thing in relationship is the groundwork of relationship, like the the foundation of creating any relationship, right? When I say relationship, I mean friends, family, lovers, children. The groundwork to creating any relationship is knowing what you're actually doing them for. How many of you actually are aware of what you're doing relationships for rather than you just kind of like stumbling around being like, well, apparently I require relationships and friendships and everything. Like no one asks us, what are you doing a relationship for? 
But knowing what you're actually doing relationship for can allow you to more successfully gauge the success of the relationship, whether the relationship is actually working for you or not. Now, what you're doing relationship for is probably going to be different depending on what relationship we're talking about. It's probably going to be different what you're doing relationship for with a lover compared to what you're doing relationship for with a business partner, if that makes sense. So relationships can be incredibly challenging, but I know for me, once you actually know what you're doing them for, there is so much clarity and awareness that then comes about whether whatever's going on is actually working or not. So if you're looking at like what a relationship should be like, or you're confused and you're in a relationship and you're just like, I don't know if this is working, are these old friendships still working for me? Start with what am I doing this for? What am I actually doing this relationship for? Because everybody does relationship for something. There's always an agenda or multiple agendas that the relationships you're in are meant to achieve that actually motivates all of your choices to stay to go, whatever that is. Now, an example of like, what are you doing relationship for? So many people do relationships to heal another. So it's like being the unfulfilled savior of the universe because the other person wanted it. So to fulfill someone else's need or desire, to fulfill a need that you have. And that need may be to be validated, to be loved, to prove that you are worthy, to make your parents happy or to heal your parents. They're kind of like a lot of the um, main reasons we do relationship. And I think that's why I mentioned like trigger warning at the start of this, because this is not a like relationship is not necessarily a light topic, but you have to know what you're doing it for in order to have kind of success in this area at all. Does that make sense for you guys? And like a little bit kind of like, ah, I'm not really sure if I like. I don't want to look at this either. That's why I was like trigger warning. Um, and Kim was like, is that where we take on all the responsibility to the point where we exclude ourselves? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we do with this, this piece about allowance where we don't, where we go from actually requiring to get to more allowance into actually excluding our desires, like in the process. Um, and then you've written, what if I discover that it's not suitable? Interesting. And this is the thing that um, this is the thing that comes up for everybody in relationship, like even friendship, because we've already. How many of you have already decided that it's not suitable? Like, how many of you have already decided that if you actually go down the path of looking like what you're doing any of these relationships for, that it's already not going to work or be suitable? Like, the only choice you have is to leave. But the interesting thing is like, if we're not willing to kind of really start looking at this and getting honest with ourselves and having the awareness of what we're doing all of this for, um, you're excluding yourself. You're never going to have what's truly possible, even with the people that you're in relationship with, because you might actually get the awareness that actually that relationship works for you way more than you've ever been willing to acknowledge before, because it actually works for you but you may have been using everybody else's reality as a reference point. So you've been judging that as not working when ultimately when you actually start to get clear on what you're doing it for, may realize that it's actually phenomenal and actually allow yourself to receive more from that relationship. So that's what I just want to mention with this. Like, yeah, I'm just going to leave it here that if you are wondering whether any relationship right now is working or not just start by asking like what am I what am I doing relationship for what am I doing this for so I'll give you an example what I recognized is that I used to do relationship based on need based on validation based on proving my worth like I would look for anybody to be in a relationship with either romantic or friendships to prove that I was worth something. And if I didn't really have friendships or I didn't have a big group of people around me, I thought that I was worth nothing. Now what I've realized by asking that question is, oh my gosh, what I would actually like to do a relationship for is actually to create a greater reality, to actually create something greater period and invite people to what's actually possible, to the communion that's actually possible and available. With 
having that awareness, I've then been able to look at all the relationships I'm currently in, but then go, what can I create with this person that I've not been willing to acknowledge before? Because I wasn't, I didn't even have the awareness that I'd actually like to do relationships to create something greater, to gift me more of me than I've ever had available before. So do you see how like our unwillingness to look at things, I, and I get it, it's like super uncomfortable and can be like so scary, but like, who does that belong to? Like our unwillingness to actually like get the awareness of what we would like to have or create keeps us from everything becoming greater, everything. And in that moment, all that can happen is you maintain everything that is. And most people kind of complain about what is, but then go, oh my God, like, what if I don't, what if I don't like the awareness that I have? But what if the awareness you're about to have is this infinite possibility that becomes available and all these doors that open up from your willingness to go, oh, wow, I think I'd actually like them to create a greater future. Am I choosing that? Not really. I didn't even know I could ask that question. And then all of a sudden, like all of these, what I noticed is all of these relationships around me have just become so much more and people have started receiving me more and acknowledging me more. Um, and these people are still in my life. They were in my life before the question, but that question has gifted me the ability to receive the contribution those people desire to be for me and the contribution the universe desires to be for me and all those people that are waiting on the sidelines that I've been asking to show up that haven't been able to because I haven't been willing to acknowledge that I'm actually desiring to do this to actually gift me more of me. So what if this area relationship could be so much greater than you've ever been willing to acknowledge before? And I get it. We didn't have good teachers. We were not empowered in this area whatsoever. In fact, we were mainly disempowered, almost completely disempowered. We've never really had someone say, what if they could get greater? How many of you only see them get worse over time? Whether that be your parents, whether that be friends, whether that be your kind of track record where you may have been in multiple romantic relationships that haven't worked. But this is where like your point of view creates your reality. You guys are aware of this. So what point of view could you choose that would allow everything to become greater? And what I recognize, which honestly was still to this day, probably the most excruciating awareness I've ever had about myself is that I'm actually here to invite people to something greater in relationships, which means something beyond anything I've ever seen exist on planet earth before, which even for me is scary because I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm not even sure what that looks like, but I'm willing because I don't want this just to be about me. And there's so many awarenesses that I've had, so many people that have come into my life, so many incredible experiences that I have had show up to gift me the awareness of like what's actually possible. So if you're not satisfied with, I guess, like the relationships around you, it always comes back to us anyway. So this doesn't mean there's anything wrong with anyone around you. I mean, there's nothing wrong, period, anyway. But what I have noticed is the more you're willing to receive yourself, acknowledge yourself, see yourself, and be truly vulnerable about what you'd really like to have, the more the universe conspires to gift you all of that without you having to do a thing. And this is what hasn't, like, has been so fascinating for me. I haven't had to do anything. I've just had to be willing to have the vulnerability with me to actually start receiving me to a degree that most people are not willing to receive themselves. And all of a sudden, like this magic shows up. So it's not even about the other person that you're with. Like even you asking, like, what am I doing relationship for has nothing to do with that other person. If you're doing them to create something greater or to create um, a greater future and you're not willing to have that awareness, you also then cannot invite the people that you're already in relationship with to that greater as well. Do you guys get that? And what I realized was that was a great unkindness to not only me, but everybody else that desires to be invited to something different that I already decided would not. The thing is, it's like 
your relationship with you sets the tone of every single other relationship in your life anyway. So it's like to believe that things are always going to be the same is like, again, like a great unkindness to you. It's like, what if they could be so different? And what if it's just the point of view that they're not going to be greater that um keeps us from like incredibly nurturing and nurturing relationships, which can be the ones that you already have. Cause that's what I've, that's what I've really noticed. Like the thing is, if you're actually truly choosing for you, you're actually choosing for everybody. Um, and you can also, if you wanted to, you can also add, like if I was choosing for like myself, the universe and greater consciousness, like what would I actually choose? And that may be easier, an easier question for you to ask, or you may get more clarity about that as well. It's a choice that we make to create distance and put up barriers. So you want to look at, is it your barriers that you're aware of, or is it others' barriers that you're aware of through the choices that you're making? I think I'm going to leave it at that before I like explode your brains even more and <laughs> for you all to just <laughs> go into this space of, um, yeah, anything other than where we're at now. So yeah, it's like, what if things could only get greater? That like truly, not just a, a question that you've heard me ask or not just a thing you're like, oh yeah, I've heard people say that it can only get greater or it can get greater. You know, like, like what if you actually embodied this, like truly with, with every single person in your life? Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd be so grateful if you left a five-star review and share it with someone you know. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to be notified of upcoming episodes. You can find more about me at ashley-rose.com. And remember, creating the life and love you crave is absolutely possible and available to each and every one of you.